Psalm 94, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself, lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thy heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. <coughs> Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, you brutish among the people, ye fools, when will you be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chastens the heathen, shall he not correct? He that teaches man knowledge, shall he not know? The Lord knows the thoughts of, of man, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, teachest him out of thy law. Thou, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, my foot slips, thy mercy, O Lord, have held me. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy, my, thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the, the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frames mischief by a law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. He shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. Probably never sung that song. Have you? Maybe you have some variations of it as a child in some of the songs. But you know, we think when we pray, we pray God's blessing, right? We pray that the Lord would bless and we'd have world peace and everything would go great. But there are many psalms that are called imprecatory psalms. They're prayers. They're prayers that God would judge. And yes, we do pray that the Lord would bless. I, I want the Lord to bless. But I think that there are times when we can say, God, will you just judge this place? And whoever the psalmist was, we don't know who wrote this one. He's asking, Lord, to whom vengeance belongs? Oh, Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs? Show yourself. So many people looking at our world today and they're crying out, Lord God, how long? How long, oh Lord, will you put up with this nonsense? How much longer are you going to allow mankind just to, to sin against you, do wanton sin, and just destroy and cause problems and murder babies and all that kind of stuff? How long are you going to allow it, Lord? It's a valid question. And so when we see all of the wickedness around us, there's a lot of wickedness, we should be com not complaining one to another. But that's what we normally do, Right? We see things going on, the first, our first reaction is to complain. In fact, I jokingly say, I vote so that I can complain. <laughs> so, if my favorite candidate turns out to be not the best person, I'm going to complain. But maybe what we should do is say, Lord God, would you judge them? Would you bring swift judgment so that the wicked will learn? Don't live that way. So the psalmist is asking, Lord, will you show yourself? Judge of the earth, will you lift yourself up to reward the proud. How will God reward the proud? What does the Bible say about pride? God hates pride. It comes before a fall. Where pride is, then comes judgment. Yes, Lord. Render that reward to the proud, to the people who say God can't see. Say, so like, Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? Have you felt that in your soul and you're just looking at the, at the state of our country, at our world, and you say, how long is wicked people going to get away with it? I mean, they're literally getting away with murder. How long, Lord? How long are they going to triumph? How much longer? How long shall they utter, utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? 
And he's, he's, it's like he's pleading with God. God, they're breaking your people into pieces and they're afflicting your heritage. Now, this is specifically about the Jewish nation. And there were many times that, that even Babylon came in, the Persians came in, other nations came in, and they broke Israel into pieces. They literally crushed the people. They killed them. It was just, you know, it was war. They just conquered them all. And he's asking God, look, they're, they're breaking your people into pieces. They're destroying your people. Or God, don't you see that? They slay the widow and the, fa- the stranger and murder the fatherless. You know how many fatherless children are murdered every year? Do you think God sees that? Do you think God sees the genocides that happen in various places? Do you think God sees the workers of iniquity who are behind all sorts of deaths that are traced to other things than themselves? Medical deaths, drug-related deaths, deaths poverty-related deaths, war-related deaths. We just, we attribute those, you know, we look at the statistics and say, you know, this many people died from drug overdoses, this many people died from this, that, and the other thing. But oftentimes there's a mechanism going on behind the scenes. God sees even that. How many people died from certain things that were given to them in good faith to help them and they died? It happens. People, people are convinced, hey, this is going to help me. And so they take it and then they die. God sees that. God sees all of that. They say, the Lord shall not see. That's foolish. To say that God won't see, God sees everything. He sees what's done in secret. He sees what's done behind closed doors, in, in mountain caves, below the earth. He sees what's, what's nobody else sees. God sees all of it. But these foolish people are saying, the Lord shall not see this. The God of Jacob shall, he won't even regard it. He won't even know about it. God's not like the other gods of this world that people worship, idols that people put up on shelves, other things. God made everybody. He made everything. And this is what the psalmist says. Look, he who planted the ear, shall he not hear? (laughs) God made hearing. Do you think he's not going to hear? The one who made the eyes, do you think he's not going to see? He's chastening the heathen. He's, He's teaching knowledge to all of the nations. Do you think he doesn't know? The psalmist here is saying is God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. He knows all things. He's all powerful. Nothing is hidden from his sight. Or God, how long? How long will you allow this? How long will this take place? The Lord knows the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Uh, Anytime you bring up politics, it's really divisive, can be. But the basic thrust of all politics is we want control over other people. That's the truth of it. Well, God's the one who's sovereign. God's the only one who's sovereign. And we're not gonna answer to any other man. We're gonna answer to God himself. When When we stand before the Lord on that final day, God's just gonna show us all of our thoughts are just vain. They're vain thoughts. Think about how long we live. I mean, this month, this year's almost over with. Just yesterday, it was January 1st. You know? <laughs> you know? Won't be many more years, I'll be 50. Just feels like yesterday I was 18. You know, and some of us were a little bit further along than that. And, and our lives are so short. Everything that we think about, like, if it's not planted on the Lord, it's just vain thoughts. All of our little plans and plottings and imaginations, I'm gonna build my own kingdom. No, 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 no. Look, when you die, people might write a book about you if you're nefarious enough, but you're gonna be forgotten within a few few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years at best. And, and people will, will go on with their own vain lives, right? <laughs> and, and people are just gonna live on. God knows the thoughts of man. They're vain. They're vain thoughts. But blessed is the man whom the Lord chastens. Blessed is the man that the Lord disciplines. Blessed is the man that the Lord corrects and teaches out of his law that he may give him rest from his days of adversity. Every single one of us is going to face trials and troubles in this life, aches and pains and (coughs) heartaches and stress and struggle. The only way you're going to get rest from this endless cycle that marches on until we die is to spend time with the Lord. You can have heaven on earth while the Lord is here. You can be free from that, that God may give him rest 
for the days of, uh, from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. The days are coming that the pit will be digged for the wicked. There will be a day of judgment. God is coming. God won't cast off his people or, or forsake his inheritance, but judgment shall return on, unto righteousness and all the upright in heart shall follow it. What's the, difference gonna ha- what's the difference between the righteous and wicked on the day of judgment when the Lord comes? Is there any difference? The wicked are going to be judged. They're going to be consumed by, with the Lord's anger, but the Lord's going to bless the wicked and they'll get to be with the Lord forevermore. So why do we think we're gonna escape that? Why do people think they're gonna escape that? You're not going to escape it. Your best course of action is to repent and put faith in the Lord and live an upright life so that you can escape on the day of judgment. But there are so many people who are saying, God's not paying attention. I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. If there's no God, fool says in heart, there is no God. And they live their life any way they want to and then that day's coming and the Lord is going to strike them down and they're gonna be cast into the pit. They're gonna be first cast into hell and then they're gonna be cast into the lake of fire where their judgment will not ever stop. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Who can help us? Who can help us in our time of need? Well, unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would almost dwell in silence. I'm saying if, if God didn't answer in our darkest days, I'd be dead. I, I, I would dwell in silence because that's where the grave's at. I, I'd just be dead. So if God doesn't help us, there's no help. And so when, we, when we're in times of difficulty, we see these things going on, what we need to do is ask God for help. I said my foot slips. Where's it slipping? Towards death. My foot is slipping towards this. And the Lord uphold me. He upheld me. The Lord helped me in it. In the multitudes of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. In the multitude of my thoughts, thy comforts delight my soul. We can focus in on the wickedness of this world, or we can focus in on the, on the Lord. If we focus in on the wicked, what we need to understand is that the wicked will be judged. But if you focus in on the Lord, you can know that There's no judgment there for us. The Lord will forgive. The Lord will cleanse. The Lord will restore. We'll we'll be with the Lord. There's no judgment in that. God's judging the wicked. He's saving the righteous. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with God? Do you think when Jesus comes back that he's going to be like, oh, cool, you're the Antichrist. Hey, let's go have a picnic. No, the Bible says he's going to cast him alive into the lake of fire. I don't know where the lake of fire is, but wherever that happens, I'm, I'm thinking the ground is going to open up and boom, there the fire is, and he's thrown into the lake of fire. There is no fellowship that the Lord has with iniquity. There's not. We find this in other passages in the Bible. God has no fellowship with the unrighteousness. They gather themselves against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood, but the Lord is my defense. God's the rock of my refuge, and he shall bring upon them their own iniquity. There are people right now plotting all sorts of wickedness against righteousness. They're plotting against the Lord. They may be, you know, this is, this is a foolish thought, but think about how people believe and how they live. I can imagine that all of the arsenals that people are trying to build in this world are being built so that one day they can try to take Jesus out. Can you imagine how foolish that thought is? God who made the atoms and the elements that make up the atom is not going to be nuked by anything that man makes. In fact, He'll just cause it to just dissipate. There's nothing that mankind and its wickedness can do against the Lord. God will bring it back on themselves. It may go up. That rocket might go up. But guess where it's coming back to? To the wicked. And the Lord will use even that to destroy the wicked. He'll cut them off in their own wickedness. Yes, the Lord shall cut them off. He starts with, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, show yourself. And what does he end with? God will cut them off. He does not take any pleasure in wickedness. So take heart. Although the world may be wicked and coming against us, the Lord will judge the wicked and he'll cut them off, which means they won't be here anymore and we won't have anything else to worry about. Put your trust in the Lord. Comfort your soul 
with thoughts of the Lord. Be in the Word. Let the Word fill your heart and mind so that you can focus in on truth and not be overcome by the wicked. Don't be overcome by fear. Put your trust in me. Psalm 95.